AMD versus Intel, a comparison that has been going on since 1975 and it is going to happen as long as these two companies are in the microprocessor industry. I'm going to do a comparison too and here are two laptops in today's video. This is the ASUS ZenBook S16 UM5606W equipped with the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370 and this is the ASUS ZenBook S14 UX5406S equipped with the latest Intel Core Ultra 7 258V. The review for both of these laptops are down in the description, so watch them after you have finished watching this video. Okay, now both of these AMD and Intel's chips are the latest processors and they are great in their own ways. While there are some obvious differences that will affect the comparison, like the size difference between these two laptops, it shouldn't affect the performance comparison, but we will talk about it when the time comes. So do hit that subscribe button and also share this video because we have a lot of data to go through. Now, there are two different approaches to this generation. And I have to preface this by saying that these two chips are just achieving different objectives. The latest Intel Core Ultra Mobile Processors Series 2, yes, that is the official name of this brand new generation of Intel mobile processors, they are all aimed towards ultrabooks and they all have a very low wattage ceiling. There are a lot of SKUs as well and there will be more processors for higher end gaming laptops in the future as well. Presumably it will be called the H series according to what we had in the past. For this particular Intel Core Ultra mobile processors series 2 chips, they are all based on the new Luna Lake architecture which plays a heavy emphasis on efficiency. If you haven't already watched our other video about this chip, then please check it out because we have a lot of data about its efficiency as well. The Intel Core Ultra 7 258V found in this laptop comes with 4 P cores and 4 E cores and no hyper threading, so we only have 8 cores and 8 threads. The integrated GPU has also been upgraded to the new Intel Arc Graphics 140V and this is a big upgrade over its previous generation. And for this chip in particular, the power ranges from these three values, but we've seen it mostly hovering around 1 to 3 watts while idling at desktop. The new Intel Core Ultra Mobile Processors Series 2 are also fabricated by TSMC's N3B process node. As for AMD, they are doing things very differently this time. While they used to be one low powered and one high powered series of chips, AMD has now consolidated everything into just three chips. Yes, these three chips. The ZenBook S16 is equipped with the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370 that comes with 4 Zen 5 cores and also 8 Zen 5C cores and also has simultaneous multi-threading and that means 12 cores, 24 threads. For the integrated GPU, we have the new AMD Radeon 890M and this is also a major improvement over its predecessor. Since the new AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370 can also be used on low-powered or high-powered laptops, it has a configurable TDP ranging from 15 to 54 watts, with its default at 28 watts. This also means that the performance will vary greatly depending on how much power is provided to the chip. And this could lead to a lot of confusion to many users as two different laptops with the same chip could perform at completely different levels. The entire Strix Point family of chips are fabricated using TSMC's 4 nanometer FinFET process node, a little bit older than Intel's, so that will also definitely affect its power consumption as well. Now let's move on to some gaming benchmarks. We did two different tests for Black Myth Wukong. The first one is with Intel's XESS technology, and we can see that AMD outperformed Intel by a considerable amount. When we switch over to FSR, the trend continues but the overall frame rates are just better than XESS in general. Now, we don't know what version of XESS or FSR is in use for this game in particular since it just doesn't tell us, but this is what we get. For Cyberpunk 2077 version 2.13, we have more options. With XESS 1.3 upscaler tech, we can get pretty good frame rates on both AMD and Intel, though the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370 still performs better. Then we switch over to FSR 3, and the performance actually dropped compared to XESS 1.3. This is a complete 180 from what we had compared to Black Myth Wukong benchmarks. But when we enable FSR 3, 
with frame generation, both of these laptops got a massive spike in terms of performance, but not as much as this ZenBook S16. One weird thing that I have to highlight is that if we turn on FSR3 with frame generation, then this game will only work in borderless window mode. Now let's talk about GTA 5. This is an interesting game as the average frame rate on Intel's is higher, surprisingly, and it can go above 120 FPS. However, the minimum frame rate is at only around 33 FPS, which is actually very low. On AMD's side, the average frame rate is only at around 119 FPS at most, which is still a respectable number, but the minimum frame rate is also much better than Intel's, as it only went down to about like 53 FPS. The difference is huge, and with all things considered, the experience should be better on the AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370 due to the frame rate not fluctuating that big of a gap. This is also apparent in games like Xenozone Zero as the AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370 yields a more consistent frame rate and has less frame dips. But this comes at a price. AMD's chip isn't as efficient as Intel's. While gaming, we measure the SoC power draw on both of these chips and they are about the same, 27 watts throughout, and they do spike above it sometimes. The magnificence of Intel's latest Lunar Lake architecture comes when we are not gaming on battery. If we just idle at the desktop, the Intel chip can dip below 1 watt, though only for a split second. It mostly hovers around 1 to 3 watts, whereby on AMD side, it averages at about 4 watts while idling. That also translates to battery life as well. Our test isn't one-to-one -one here since, you know, both of these laptops are of different sizes. Even though the OLED screens are of the same resolution, the pixel size is different. And that will also affect the power consumption of the screens themselves and the battery capacity between both of these laptops are also different. I use the PCMark Modern Office battery life test with both of these laptops locked at 100 nits brightness and at 120Hz refresh rate, and this is the result that we got. But we have to consider the battery capacity, so we did some math to calculate the average power consumption, and here are the numbers. Again, this isn't a one-to-one -one comparison since the laptop sizes are different. Honestly speaking, I think that they both did a very good job and will last you throughout one full day of usage of about 8 hours on battery, if we are not using some heavy applications like Photoshop or Premiere Pro and the likes. Intel did a particularly good job on efficiency while AMD provides a much better performance when it is plugged in. Another thing that we can't compare directly is the SoC temperature. Since the size is different, the amount of room available for air to move around and for heat to dissipate is also different. And from the data we've gathered though, they are about the same temperature Intel can boost up to 90 degrees because of its boost clock speeds. Still, it is much better than the previous generation of Intel processors. So the conclusion, who is the winner in this comparison? Well, I'd say it depends on what you want from your laptop. I'd say Intel had a very big overhaul compared to the previous generation as they are now focusing much more on efficiency and they still manage to improve the performance by quite a lot. The battery life on this ZenBook S14 UX5406S with the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V is just outstanding. It's comparable to an ARM laptop but without the app incompatibility issues and I'm just very impressed by what Intel had did. If you want the absolute best battery life possible, then this Intel Core Ultra 7 258V is the clear winner. The AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370 is also a fantastic chip. While it is not as efficient as Intel's chip, it offers much better performance, especially while gaming. Assuming that you want to use the laptop to play games and whatnot, then this chip is magnificent. I can't believe that we are starting to play those AAA games on a thin and light laptop like this, with the help of some upscaling tech like FSR, of course. If you want a balanced experience, especially a better gaming experience on a laptop, then the AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370 is the winner. But remember, we are only talking about thin and light laptops in this comparison. Once we move to gaming laptops though, then the AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370 will have a much different TDP and also a discrete GPU, whereby Intel will have another series of high wattage CPUs as well. So that's all that we have to share with you in today's comparison. 
which one would you pick? AMD or Intel? Or it just doesn't matter to you? What do you think about the efficiency of both of these laptops? Because laptops are battery powered and efficiency is very important. Let us know down in the comment section below and we'll see you guys in the next video.